Let's stand to our feet. I want to welcome everyone. A live church is a family. Our desire is that we fall more in love with God and one another every day. We want to once again welcome everyone that's here in person. It takes effort to be in person, but there's, there's something special about being in person. But we also want to say hello to our live church family that's streaming through KITV, YouTube, Facebook, wherever you're streaming from this morning, we want to say hello. We're going to start off by reading our core passage that we've been mentioning every Sunday during this sermon series, Heroes of Faith. So I'm going to read it, and it's going to come up on the screens, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. And as that's coming up, <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 11 lists heroes of faith. We have heroes like Samson and Noah and Jonah and David and Abraham and Sarah and all these mighty men and women are listed in Hebrews chapter 11. And so now we start Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, and it says, Therefore, so it's talking about since we just listed all these mighty men and women of God, therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay aside every encumbrance. What does that mean? Burden. Let us lay aside every burden and the sin which so easily entangles us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. And now this is not going to come on the screen, but I'm going to read over us the exact same passage, but my favorite version is the message. And listen what the message has to say. Just receive it over yourself this morning. Do you see what this means? All these pioneers who blazed the way, all these veterans cheering us on, it means we better get on with it. Strip down, start running, and never quit. No extra spiritual fat, no parasitic sins. Keep your eyes on Jesus, who both began and finished the race that we're in. Amen? Father God, we pray today that if any one of us here has put ourselves on the sidelines or allowed others to put us on the sidelines, today is the day of new beginnings. Today is the day of stepping back into the race. Holy Spirit, speak to us. If we have any spiritual fat, if we have any parasitic sins, if we have anything that can slow us down from running the race with purpose, running the race with intention, and not giving up, speak to us, Father. For we today want to do spiritual stretches and get ready for the race. And we want to jump into the race. And we want to run it with every part of our heart, soul, and strength today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Today, I am going to pull down a mighty woman of God from the heavenly grandstands and her name is Deborah. And Deborah lived in the time of the Judges. In fact, her story takes place in Judges chapter 4. What happened is Moses led the people of Israel out of Egypt, out of bondage. But he wasn't allowed to go into the promised land. But his disciple Joshua took his place and took the people of Israel into the promised land, and they began to defeat the enemies. And Joshua told the people the key is destroying the enemy, not cohabiting with the enemy, and not worshiping their gods. But if we will worship the one and true God, he will help you to continue to defeat your enemies. 
And in Joshua chapter 24, verse 16, it said, the people answered Joshua, and they said, we'd never forsake God. And those of us that know the book of Judges, we laugh. Never, we'd never leave God to worship other gods. Then what happened is Joshua and his generation passes away, and we pick up the story in Judges chapter 2. This is the environment that Deborah lived in. Judges chapter 2, verses 10 and 11, it says this, after that whole generation, Joshua and all those mighty warriors, after they had been gathered to their ancestors, another generation grew up who knew neither the Lord nor what he had done for Israel. Then the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord and served the Baals. Baal was a specific God, a God of fertility, but when you see Baals, it can mean just they began to worship other gods. This was the spiritual climate that Deborah lived in. It was a time of evil, a time of chaos, and God would raise up judges during this time to help navigate the people of Israel and to bring them back to himself. So that's where we're going to pick up Judges chapter 4, verses 4 and 5. We're going to talk about Deborah. Now Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lepidith, who was judging Israel at that time, verse 5, and she used to sit under the palm tree of Deborah. Imagine, she went and prayed so much under this tree, they named it the palm tree of Deborah. Could you imagine the park bench of John? The sidewalk of Simon? The park of Mary? Google Maps recognized that Deborah prayed under this palm tree. Between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim, and the sons of Israel came up to her for judgment. So Deborah was both a prophet, or some, some versions say prophetess. She was a prophet and she was a judge. The only other person in the Bible to carry the mantle of prophet and judge was Samuel. So I think if we call Deborah down from the grandstands, I think the first word of advice that she would give us, because prayer was the core of who she was as a prophetic voice to Israel. As a godly judge, she knew she needed to be a woman of prayer. So I think what Deborah would say is, go to the throne before going to the phone. Deborah would say, honey, go to the throne before going to the phone. See, I think it's important to use one another as sounding boards, to go to each other, to go to our Bible study leaders and those discipling us and our pastors for advice and good sounding boards. But Philip and I will have so many people, they'll come to us and say, this is my problem. What do you think? And you know the first thing that Philip and I will say is what did God tell you? Because it's important to go to the throne before going to the phone, before looking up an answer on Google or some Christian app that we have ready on our phone. We need to find out what did the God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, have to say about this? See, Deborah, I think, would say, when I was living, only a few of us could hear the voice of God. But you, you special chosen few, were born after the cross when the veil was ripped, and each one of you can step into a personal relationship with Jesus. Take, take advantage of it. In fact, not only can we step into a relationship with Jesus, but in John chapter 10, verse 27, it says, My sheep know my voice. 
not only can we have a relationship with Jesus, but we're expected to have a relationship with Jesus. And you know, one tool that I want to leave us before going to my second point is it's important to hear the voice of God. And there are different tools that we can use to hear the voice of God. One important tool is take time to read the Word of God and get to know God's nature. Because we receive the voice of God and filter it through how we understand God to be. How we understand God to be is filtered through that perception of him, and that's how we interpret his voice. Some people have a wrong understanding of, of God the Father because they perceive that God the Father is like their earthly father. So every time they think they hear his voice, it's going through the perception of how they view their earthly father. How do we perceive God the Father? I want you to think about that. You know, that's, that's an important question. In fact, I would go on to say that how we perceive God may be the most important question that we're ever asked. I want you to think about it. I'm going to count to three. One, I'm going to go one, two, three, and I want you to say how you perceive God in one word. Think about it. That's tough. How do you perceive God in one word? Ready? One. Those of you at home, you can participate. Two, three. Kind. I can't for sure what everyone said, but it sounded really good, people. It sounded, I have a smart group here. I perceive God to be kind. In fact, I would say God is extravagantly kind. Those of you that know me know I like watching sports, all sports. College football launches next week, University of Notre Dame versus Florida State, I'm on it. I also enjoy watching HGTV. Do we have any secret HGTV underground black market watchers here? I am now watching something called Island Hunters. And these are people that not only buy homes, they buy whole islands with homes. In fact, I was just talking to some people last week. Philip and I had taken the girls up to the Muskokas. Those of you that are, don't know uh, Canada geography, it's kind of like the Hamptons of Ontario. Can we agree like that? We went to the Muskokas. And Justin Bieber owns an entire private island in the Muskokas. Now, that's not just getting by living. <laughs> that is extravagant living, which means over the top, overboard living. And when I think of God, I don't think of just a kind God. He is extravagant. He is extravagant in everything that he does. He is over the top, cup running over type of God. If we would ask God what we, he would say about himself, what do you think he would say? In Exodus chapter 34, God actually speaks about himself. Moses said, show me thy glory. And God took Moses and put Moses behind a rock because he couldn't handle the glory of God. And when God became, began to walk by Moses, he says this, then the Lord passed by in front of him, in front of Moses, and he proclaimed, the Lord, the Lord God, compassionate and merciful, slow to anger. Let's say that together. Slow to anger and abounding in faithfulness and truth. 
who keeps faithfulness for thousands, who forgives wrongdoing and violation of his law and his sin. That's the kind of God we serve. And when we begin to understand the nature of God and who he is and what he's like, when we hear his voice, we can say, yeah, that's my heavenly father. When we hear a voice that's condemning, accusatory, judgmental, angry, that's not who God is. My God is kind. He's generous. He's gracious. He's enthusiastic. He's joyful. He's edifying. He has a bit of humor. And you know what he does? Correct. But when we're corrected by him, we feel loved in the process. That's the kind of God that we serve. So we need to be a people that goes to the throne before going to the phone and learning this amazing God that we call God the Father. You know, the second thing that I think Deborah would say is be a people that encourages. Be an encourager. I think we, everyone in this room and everyone watching online would definitely say this world has enough critics. We need prophetic people that rise up. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 3, it says, For but those who prophesy speak to men for encouragement, edification, exhortation, and comfort. I memorize it that if you're a prophetic voice, you should be E-E-C, edifying, encouraging, and comforting. We need prophetic people that rise up and remind us that even though we may be in the presence of a storm, do not doubt the presence of God. Come on, Alive Church. We may be in a storm, but God is there because he is faithful, because his loving kindness, we can never go too far from it. We need prophetic voices to rise up and remind one another that blessings come on the other side of opposition, so don't give up. We need prophetic voices to go around speaking to one another, reminding every one of us that we were made on purpose for a purpose. Lisa was made on purpose for a purpose. So let's run the race. Let's not give up. Let's strip ourselves of anything that entangles us. And let's go for our purposes. Judges chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. This is Deborah, the mighty woman. It says this. Now she sent and summoned Barak, the son of Ambimion from Kedesh Nephtali. For those of you that struggle reading Old Testament words, the key is speak confidently and as quick as possible. (laughs) Okay, that's another tool. That was a good one. Now she sent and summoned Barak, the son of Abimeam from Kedesh Nefetuli, and said to him, Behold, the Lord God of Israel has commanded Go and march to Mount Tabor and take with you 10,000 men from the sons of Nephetili and from the sons of Zebulun. Those are the tribes in the north. And verse 7, and I will draw out to you Caesarea, the commander of Jabin's army and his chariots and his many troops and to the river Kishon, and I will give him into your hands. This man had 900 chariots. In today's warfare, if you have nuclear weapons, you were the leader of the pack, right? Those of us that have nuclear or biological weapons, we're on top. 
But back then it was all about chariots. And his army had been torturing the people of Israel. I think about what Afghanistan is going through right now. And we will continue to pray for the country of Afghanistan. But I think that his army was, was besieging Israel and tormenting and killing and oppressing them for over 20 years. So Deborah goes to Barak and she encourages him. She exhorts him. She says, you can do it because God is with you. You can do it. Craig Groeschel has a quote that I love, and he says, you never know what you may set into motion with one simple word of encouragement. We never know what we can set into motion in someone's life by saying, you were made on purpose for a purpose. We never know what we could set into motion in someone's marriage by saying, you can get through this. We never know what we can set in motion in someone's lineage by speaking the goodness of the Lord and the blessings of the Lord over a family. You know one thing I found very interesting? We talked at the very beginning about Judges chapter 11, and that's the listing of all the heroes of faith. In Judges chapter 11, I'm going to turn, I'm going to just speak this. It lists all the heroes of faith, but you know who it doesn't? I mean, sorry, Hebrews chapter 11. In fact, I'm going to switch to it in my Bible. In Hebrews chapter 11, that's when all the heroes of faith are listed. And in verse 32, I'm going to read that. And what more shall I say, for time will fail me, if I tell you of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David, and Samuel, and the prophets. You know who wasn't mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11? Deborah. Barak, the man who needed encouragement, the man who wouldn't go into war without Deborah, was listed in the heroes of faith. Where's Deborah? I mean, I guess we could say she was cloaked into the prophets. She's not listed. You know what? I don't think she cared. I'm going to circle back to point number two, and we're going to recalibrate that. I think Deborah would say, be an encourager even if you don't get the glory. Be an encourager, even if nobody knows it started with you. Even if your idea never gets praise. We're going to be a people that does the right thing, despite the responses of everybody else. Go to the throne instead of going to the phone. Be an encourager, even if you don't get the glory. And you know the third thing that I think Deborah would say, and we're going to close with this. Be brave. Be brave. Verse 8, it says this, Judges, Chapter 4, verse 8. Then Barak said to her, If you will go with me, then I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. Nowhere in this passage did I read that Deborah was a warrior. I've heard lots of messages on the warring spirit of Deborah, or Deborah being this warrior, but Judges says that she was a prophet and a judge. And we know that she liked to hang out under a tree. 
So I could imagine Barak coming to Deborah and saying, I need you to be a soldier. I need you to be a warrior. And she might not have, I'm just kind of playing around with this. She might not have said this out loud or this isn't recorded. But I could imagine her thinking, Barak, Barak, Barak. You see, this, paw, this little tree, this is my war room. And I'm more, when you look at the body of Christ and the fingers and the toes and all the different parts, I'm the prayer person. I'm the prayer person. I'm the person that, see, I, I know who I am. I know who I'm not. I'm comfortable and secure in who I am. And you just need to go ask a warrior to do warring with you. See, I was talking with my pastors, Pastor Stephen Beth, the other week. And one thing that we were talking about is people have gotten very good in saying, this is who I am. This is who I'm not. This is what I'm about. Instead of putting on a servant's heart and saying, God, this is what I have to offer. How do you want to use me? This is what I have to offer. Use me in whatever way, even if I've never done this before. You're asking me to do children's ministry? You don't understand. I'm just, I'm just not a kid person. We hear that a lot when we're recruiting for children's ministry. I'm just, I'm just not one of those kid people. Uh, greeting people at the door. Uh, I'm just not a people person for it, say. Oh, the outreach team keeps emailing me. They don't understand. I'm not one of those face-to-face -face kind of people. I'm introverted. I don't go canvassing. I don't do street corner or door to door. You just, you got the wrong person. Sometimes I think we limit what God wants to do through us because either we've decided in ourself, this is who I am and this is what I do, or we've been told by somebody else, this is who you are. And I want to be like Deborah. I want to be brave. I want to say, God, if you're in it, I'm in it with you. Because when I am weak, you are strong. If you're calling me to do this, God, I'm not sure, but I can be brave because God never calls us into anything that he will not give us the tools to be successful. We need brave people to face world situations like helping refugees, helping get people out of sex slave trade, helping fight for babies that are being killed. But we need people that are brave on a daily basis, being brave enough to say, I'm sorry, being brave enough to say, please forgive me, or being brave enough to say, I choose to forgive you, being brave enough to fight through a tough patch of marriage. We need men and women of God that are willing to be like Deborah and be brave. You know, I have here a little illustration we all have worries. We need men and women that are brave enough to tackle worries. So here we have a box of worries, and we have God. And you know what I do a lot of times in a moment of just faith? I'm in the middle of a really good worship song. 
Back in the day, it was shout to the Lord. Oh, the spirit always fell and shout to the Lord. So I, we are in the middle of a worship song and the spirit of faith rises up. So what I do is I take my worries and I hand them to God. I say, here you go, God. I listen to a message that would just convicted me. And I say, God, I'm just going to take my worries and I'm going to hand them to you. Then what I do is I start clocking God. Maybe a couple of minutes, maybe a couple of hours on a real good pinnacle. A couple of days go by. And I say, well, nothing's going on here. So you know what I do? I help God right back out. I take those worries back off his hand. I give them back to myself. We have people laughing because I'm not the only one that does this. You know what? We need to be brave. We need to change our perception of God. We need to worship a bigger God. We serve a big God. We serve the creator of the heavens and the earth. We serve the God that parted the sea. We serve a big God. And you know what also helps me? Instead of just taking my worries and placing them into the hands of this big God, I take my life and I put it in him. I don't just take my worries. I take my life and I put it in him. In Colossians 3, verse 3, it says, says this, for I died or for you died and your life is now hidden with God in Christ. I take everything. I take my marriage. I take my children. I take my COVID concerns. I take my job. I take my future. I take my destiny and I place it all inside of a big God. And you know what? When I do that, God begins to whisper to me his love for me. He begins to remind me that I am daughter of the king or son of the most high. He begins to remind me of things like heaven is not, the earth is not your home and heaven is. Heaven is my home and earth is my assignment. And when I'm on earth to fulfill his heart, his mission, his calling, then all of heaven is at my disposal. I know there are many of us going through rough times, and I wish we could go from mountaintop, from mountaintop to heaven, but we need to remind ourselves that fruit is only grown in the valley. And we have a big God that's commander and chief of the heavenly armies who is my fortress, who is my strength, who is my shield, in whom shall I fear? Amen. Let's stand. Deborah gave us some good advice today, didn't she? I'm going to ask the worship team to come forward. It's so important to be like Deborah and have that palm tree. Have that place we can go to to hear his voice. It's so important in today's society that as we hear the voice of God and he encourages us in our quiet time, that we go to the highways and the byways encouraging one another, reminding people that God is with them, encouraging people to get into the race, encouraging people not to give up. And finally, to remind ourselves that we have a big God 
so we can be like Deborah and be brave. Don't write off opportunities just because you've never done them before. Don't write off a part of a track just because you feel like you're not the best one suited for the job. Because if God calls you to a terrain, he'll give you the shoes to run in. Dear Heavenly Father, help us to run this race zoned in on you. With you at our focal point, I pray for everyone here today that is tired, that has been hurt, and has sitting, is sitting on the sidelines. I pray that everyone that's on the sidelines enters back into the race. And those of us that are just slightly running, teach us how to pick up the speed how to run with faithfulness, steadiness, and endurance. If there's anything in our lives, Jesus, that's holding us back, we focus our eyes back on you and we strip off every hindrance, every burden, every anxiety, Anything that causes our eyes to go to and fro, we strip it off today and we hand it to you and we say, God, make us light. Make us swift. Make us purposeful. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Savior and my friend By your grace I live and breathe To worship you At the mention of your greatness In your name I will bow down In your presence fear is silent For you wear the victor's crown Let your glory fill this temple Let your power overflow by your grace I live and breathe to worship you. the Messiah. You're the hope of all the world. By your grace I live and breathe to worship you.
must come down. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. At the cross, your work was finished. You were buried in the ground. But the grave could not contain you. For you wear the victor's crown. Hallelujah. You have overcome. You have overcome. Hallelujah. Jesus, hallelujah. Let's clap Jesus. unto Jesus. Let's just give clap unto Jesus. Let's clap unto the name of Jesus. You have overcome, Jesus. You have overcome the world. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, mighty God. Wow. Bible says whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. That was so phenomenal. Thank you, Pastor Lisa. I was blessed. Wow. Let's get up on Pastor Lisa. Thank you so much, Pastor Lisa. Uh, we want to thank God for all the series that we are she just closed the series of the heroes. We are heroes in the house of God. Hallelujah. So we are walking as heroes of God. Amen. All right. I just want to make this prayer. Uh, I know we prayed for uh, our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan. Uh, let's continue to pray for them through the week. And all other brothers and sisters in all countries are suffering and struggling. So let's just make this prayer. And I also want us to pray for our country, uh, Canada. <laughs> it's amazing. Now I can say our country because I just moved from Uganda just uh, December last year. So now I, I'm proud that I can also say our country, Canada. So God is amazing. Anyway. Uh, so I want us to pray for our country, Canada, for uh, the election time that we're getting into uh, so that God can uh, uh, bring the right leaders. That the Bible says, if you go to the book of 1 Timothy chapter 2, uh, from verse 1 and 2, it encourages us to pray for our leaders. So let's pray for our leaders uh, that God brings the right men, the right women to stand in uh, to bring the wisdom and the counsel of God in our nation. So let's pray. Father, we want to thank you so much. Uh, thank you for your grace, for your mercy, mighty God. Thank you for this nation, Canada. Canada belongs to you, Lord. Father, we thank you for those men and women that you, they have aspired. They are inspiring. They want to become candidates. They want to become leaders in this nation. So, Father, we pray for them. May you bring the right men and women, Lord, to lead this nation, Father. Because as a church, we are the watchmen. We are the watchwomen standing. So, we pray for them that we're going to come and lead this nation. And the same way, Father... We pray for our sisters and brothers in Afghanistan, Lord. Most people have died, Lord. Father, we pray, may you bring peace in that country, Lord. Even any other country that are struggling in all nations of the world, Father, may your peace come upon them. May you save their lives, Lord. May you touch their lives, Lord. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for the message that we have received. 
you have sent your word. Thank you for those ministers, Deborah, all these heroes of faith, Elijah, all these heroes of faith, Enoch, all these heroes of faith, Samson. We have read about all of them, Lord. But now the set, the, the race is being set for us. Yeah. Baba's told us in Hebrews 12 of us too, that as we fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, Lord Jesus, we thank you because we are winning. Every day we are winning. Every day we are winning. Every day we are winning by the grace of our Lord. We thank you, Father. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you, family. Bless you guys who are watching online. We love you so much, guys, watching online. But we can't wait to have you in person at Life Church, New Market. God bless you. Till we meet again.